Hey there, I'm David. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use scriptable objects to hold on to data from one scene or level in your game and move it to the next scene. And you won't have to rely on don't destroy on load and singletons to do this. So what we're going to look at here is just using a scriptable object to store some of that data and give us um, a flag we can use to know uh, kind of which direction we're going between the scenes. I'm going to pause this here. And if you're not familiar with scriptable objects, they are just another object you can use in Unity, um, and they're um, not a mono behavior. So if you want to create one of these, what you can do is you can just go down here and uh, right click on ass assets or wherever you want to add this, and you'll add a C-sharp script, and you'll call this, I'm going to call mine scene info. And so now we've got uh, scene info, and I, I'm gonna go ahead and make another folder as well. We're gonna call it scriptable objects. And then I'm gonna move my scene info into scriptable objects. And then I'm gonna open that up. So here we're gonna open the scriptable object for scene info, and you'll notice um, it's just a mono behavior by default because we just made a script. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this because we don't need the collections. And then down here, we're gonna do, we're gonna change it from mono behavior to scriptable object. And um, I'm using some auto completion stuff in um, VS Code, uh, but uh, what, that, what this is doing is it's also giving us a way to create a scriptable object. So um, we're gonna go ahead and say, uh, we wanna have a create asset menu. We wanna call this, scriptable object by default scene info and then instead of doing um, such a long thing here we'll do, do this as persistence and uh, we don't since we're only gonna have one thing right now we can get rid of this order zero and then we can go ahead and get rid of all of this here so one of the differences between scriptable objects and mono behaviors is that um, they just don't have all those life cycle hooks that a mono behavior has. And um, so we're just gonna get rid of that stuff because we don't need it. And this is gonna be really basic. So the only thing that we really care about is a public Boolean for is next scene. And we're just gonna def set that to true by default. <clears throat> so we'll just go ahead and save that. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's complaining about a syntax problem. Oh, I see. We have the class defined twice. Great. So now we have this thing that we created called scene info, but we actually want to create a scriptable object instance. So we're going to go to create, and then you'll see now we have a persistence option up here. And so we'll just go ahead and click on that. And we're just going to call it scene info. And if we take a look at that, you'll see that it has um, is next scene here and that's checked. And this is good. This is something that we're gonna want. And I'll just show you quickly how this is gonna work. So if I was to play the game and move to the next scene here, and then I'm just gonna uncheck that. And then when I stop the game, you'll notice it's still unchecked even though the default value for it is true. And that's just because it's going to hold on to whatever value it was set to last. Uh, what we want to do is we want to take advantage of this is next scene. The player has an on enter level script and we're, we're going to uh, take advantage of that. And then each entrance and exit also has an on exit level script and we'll take advantage of those as well. Okay, so what we'll want to do here is we will want to have um, a way to store whether we're moving to the next scene or not. So we will just make a public bool is next scene. And we'll just go ahead and set it to true. And then we also want to be able to store that on the scene info scriptable object that we made. So we're going to do serialize field so that we can access this in the editor. And then we'll say public scene info. And then what we'll want to do is when we collide with this, um, you know, entrance or exit, we'll want to store if we're going to the next scene or, or not, which applies we're going to the previous scene. So here we're going to say scene info, and we're just going to do dot is next scene, and we'll set that to is next scene. So now we should be able to hold on to that without any problems. And so for the entrance, 
uh, we're not going to go, be going to the next scene. We'd be going to the previous scene. And we need to actually give it a reference to scene info. And then we'll want to do the same thing on the exit. So for the exit, we are going to the next scene. And we do want to give it a scene info as well. And then this is our first level. So I'm going to go ahead and do a save scene. And we'll do a similar thing for our next level. So I'm going to go down to scenes. We're going to open it up. And then for the um, entrance to the level, we're going to say it's not the next scene. Because if we go through that door, we're trying to load the previous scene. And then on the exit, we will say it, it, we are going to the next level. And we'll give it a reference to scene info as well. And now we just want to save uh, this scene. And I'm just going to go ahead and run this and we'll see if that data is getting set as we expect. So it's actually started us on scene two, but this will be interesting. So is next scene is set to false. And now if we go through the right door, we're going to see it's set to true because we wanted to go to the next scene. And then if we go through here again, we should also see is next scene is true. But now if we go back to the left, what we'll want to see is that this is uh, set to false because now we're going to a previous scene. And you'll notice that the data is set correctly, uh, but we're not doing anything with it yet. Um, on enter level, we want to keep track of both the game object entrance and the game object exit. And then we also need to get a hold of uh, the scene info. So again, we'll do serialize field and then we'll do public. And then down here in the start, we're gonna wanna rework this a bit because we just wanna find either the entrance or the exits position and then the offset for that. So we'll come back here. And if this works, we should see that um, we need to supply an exit here but we need to provide the scene info. And then we're just gonna save that. And we're gonna open the next level. And then uh, we do have an entrance and an exit. And then we're gonna provide the scene info as well. And we're gonna see what we get. We're gonna go through the door on the right for level two. And that's gonna start us at the entrance, which is what we would expect. And then we can just real quick also pull up the scene info here. So uh, you'll see that is next scene is what was set. And again, when we come through here to the right, it's gonna say is next scene. So what we wanna see now is if we go to the left, we wanna see this uh, become false and we wanna uh, show up on the right side of the screen. And you can see in this situation, we did end up with is next scene is false and we're appearing on the right side of the screen. If we stop, the game and then we play it again you'll notice the is next scene value is set to false and that's because it's just going to remember whatever it was last set to so when we run this we're going to show up uh, near the exit instead of near the entrance and you can see yeah we loaded over next to the exit here so um, what we want to do is we want to provide a default value we can take advantage of a uh, on enable and so for on enable, we're gonna say is next scene is true. And then you can see now we have this default on here and we're gonna try that one more time. So we're gonna run and you can see we've started near the entrance of level two. And now we're able to come in um, on the right side of level one. And this is basically is previous uh, scene. So we're gonna stop this and we should see when we run it that that value gets set to what we want again. And it does. So it's getting initialized back to um, is next scene instead of um, the previous value where it was just unchecked and we were loading on the right side of the screen. So you can use that on enable to set uh, default values that you wanna initialize your game to. I hope this video helped give you some ideas about how you can save your data and persist it between scenes in your game without having to resort to don't destroy on load and singletons to handle all of it. Um, if you like the video, just hit like, it really helps out the channel. And if you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.